Welcome back, my friends. As you all probably know by now, electric cars are all the rage. But what about franchise dealerships? Automakers are trying different approaches to bring dealers along with them. Making the transition to electric vehicles will not be easy. Some automakers are moving more vehicles sales online in a bid to compete with Tesla's profits. Ford and General Motors are asking dealers to invest in major upgrades to traditional car lots. What does this mean for the future of the car industry? And, what does this mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Legacy automakers are chasing Tesla-like profits on new electric vehicles. But they face an existential question. Can they really bring franchised auto dealers along with them as they transition to EVs? General Motors is asking luxury dealers to go all in on EVs. Or else get out of the business. Ford is offering dealers different EV certification levels. Carmakers know they need to change the sales process to fit the evolving industry. But are still trying to figure it out. I think we're all building this airplane as we fly, Michael Alford, president of the National Auto Dealers Association. Depending on the OEM, the level of engagement or the intensity of the engagement varies, Alford said. Carmakers and their franchise dealers have a complex relationship. Most states have laws that make it difficult, if not illegal, to bypass franchise dealers. That's because it would enable the sale of new vehicles directly to consumers. Tesla has worked around such regulations to cut costs. Both automakers and franchise dealers want to maximize profits. But dealerships are separate businesses. And they rely heavily on one another to succeed. Dealers rely on automakers for product to fill and move off lots. Carmakers rely on dealers to sell and service vehicles. They also serve as concierges for customers. How that historical relationship fits into an all-electric future is uncertain. And it is expected to be the centerpiece of discussions between automakers and dealers. For dealers EVs will mean a lot of changes. New employee training. Infrastructure. And substantial investments in their stores to be able to do it all. Service. Sell. And charge the vehicles. Depending on the size of the dealer. Those upgrades are going to cost hundreds of thousands. Maybe even millions of dollars. Franchise dealers need to make sure their investments pay off. The tone and tenor of this subject matter has evolved, and I think it's very, very clear this year that our legacy OEMs absolutely realize that we are essential going forward, said Alfred, who runs Chevrolet and Cadillac dealerships in North Carolina. Legacy carmakers are competing with Tesla. More automakers are introducing EVs. And they are having to rethink the sales process. That probably includes selling new cars online. Tesla was among the first automakers to convert to online sales for a large portion of its business. Actually, Tesla still has physical dealerships. It also has information sites and service shops. A greater shift online may limit the role of dealers to a limited role. Processing. Maintenance. And as delivery centers. The future might see the elimination of large lots of cars needed to sell cars. Automakers want a more streamlined and cohesive sales process. But they also consider the dealers to be their partners. Franchise dealers offer strategic advantages when it comes to other sales and maintenance issues. Honda has plans to move more sales online. That includes 100% online sales for its luxury Acura brand for EVs. We plan is to facilitate the ordering process online, said Mamadou Diallo, American Honda Vice President of Sales. But the vehicle will still be picked up or delivered by dealers. We have no intention of bypassing our dealer body, Diallo said. Jay Vijayan was instrumental in building out Tesla's digital and IT systems. Oddly enough, he doesn't think that selling EVs exclusively online will pan out. He said a mix of sales points is probably what will work out best in the end. That probably explains why Tesla is opening new showrooms and service centers. Apple still opens new stores, right? Wall Street analysts have generally though that direct-to-consumer sales is a way to optimize profit. But Tesla has had growing pains when it comes to servicing its vehicles. Ford needs dealers to cut selling and distribution costs by $2,000 per vehicle, said Ford CEO Jim Farley. Legacy automakers are scrambling to be competitive with Tesla's direct-to-consumer model. 
Ford is the carmaker that is getting the most pushback from dealers for its EV push. Ford's program includes EV certification tiers. Attaining these tiers could cost more than $1 million per store. Ford is experiencing legal challenges to the certification program from dealers. Some dealers argue that the plan violates franchise laws. A group of 27 dealerships in Illinois filed a protest with the Illinois Motor Vehicle Review Board. Four dealers in New York filed suit against Ford. Ford dealer Mark McEver said he invested in the highest EV certification tier at his dealership near Kansas City, Kansas. Despite that investment, he worries about the cost and timing of the program. I think we're all concerned that what they're having us put in now, by the time we really get some vehicles, will be outdated and need to be upgraded or replaced, McEver said. And there is more than just making the investments. Dealers who opt into selling Ford EVs will need to continuously meet five standards to stay within good standing. Clear and non-negotiable pricing. Charging investment. Employee training. An improved vehicle purchasing and ownership experience for customer. That includes both digitally and in person. Ford has since announced some changes to its EV certification tiers. The bottom tier comes with lower capital investment. But it also comes with a smaller allocation of EVs from Ford. Unlike arch-rival General Motors, Ford is allowing dealers to opt out of selling EVs. Dealers who opt out can continue to sell the company's gas-powered cars. GM has offered buyouts to its Buick and Cadillac dealers that declined to invest in selling EVs. Around 320 of Cadillac's 880 retailers accepted the buyouts. Buick's buyouts are not yet completed and still ongoing. Toyota has no plans to overhaul its franchise dealership network. I know you are anxious about the future. I know you are worried about how this business will change," said Toyota CEO Akio Toyota. While I can't predict the future, I can promise you this. You, me, us, this business, this franchise model is not going anywhere," Toyota said. It's staying just as it is," said Toyota. General Motors is clearly bullish on its profits and plans for electric vehicles. This is mostly because of technological investments that it has made. Most importantly, a new vehicle platform called Ultium. General Motors and LG Energy Solution are also building domestic plants through a joint venture called Ultium Cells LLC. The joint venture building electric vehicle battery plants in three U.S. states. Ohio. Tennessee. And Michigan. If all plants are completed, the joint venture would be the U.S. leader in domestic cell production. I am skeptical that GM's electric vehicles can be sustainably profitable by 2025, said Wells Fargo analyst Colin Longan. And that is even with incentives in the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, Longan continued. GM has reassured shareholders that it has secured binding commitments for all the battery raw material it needs. We can absolutely catch and surpass industry leader Tesla in U.S. sales of electric vehicles by 2025, said CEO Mary Barra. Those plans include more than 1 million units of EV production capacity in China and North America, each, by that time, Barra also noted. General Motors' first electric vehicle was the Chevy Bolt. The Chevy Bolt was first introduced to the market in December of 2016. But, sales volumes of the Chevy Bolt never exceeded 25,000. That is a long way from mainstream sales volumes like the numbers achieved by the gas-powered Equinox. The gas-powered Chevy Equinox sells hundreds of thousands of units every year. General Motors has created its Ultium electric vehicle platform on which all of its crossover vehicle product line will be based until at least 2030. The driving range of the Equinox EV will be 250 miles to 300 miles, depending on the battery size. This announcement comes as the average price of a new car purchase in the United States has now reached $48,000. That is up from $39,000 just two years ago. The price of new cars and trucks rose per cent in 2022, according a report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Car prices have skyrocketed in the last two years. Industry analysts believe these cheap cars will never return to the US market. But, what do you think? Please press the like button and leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.